The Holy Quran is filled with scientific miracles and astounding facts which couldn't have been possibly known 14 centuries ago. Take for example the miraculous Surah 55 verses 19 and 20. He released the two seas meeting side by side. Between them is a barrier so neither of them transgresses. This amazing YouTube video shows how two seas of different colors are separated by a barrier. Subhanallah. Think about it for a minute. Is it possible for someone 14 centuries ago without any knowledge of modern science to make such an astounding claim? So I have a neighbor, Stephen, who is a physics professor at a university. I showed this video to him and told him how the Holy Quran stated this miraculous fact long before today's scientists like him had any clue about this phenomena. Stephen, much like his namesake Stephen Hawking, is an atheist, very difficult to convince. Do you know what Stephen's reply was? This is a mere observation. Sailors in pre-Islamic Arabia must have seen such a color contrast in oceans or have met people from other places who have seen such a color contrast. There is nothing profound in this statement. Yeah, Stephen has a weird voice. Anyways, Stephen pissed me off. He also asked me to read a little bit about the history of maritime navigation. So I did some Wikipedia research and found this. Wow, maritime navigation is 4,000 to 5,000 years old. The earliest evidences of maritime navigation dates back to 3000 to 1000 BC and maritime trade networks between China, Southern India, Middle East and East Africa is as old as 1000 BC. In other words, people were sailing all over the world 1500 to 2000 years before the birth of Prophet Muhammad. So a skeptic can argue that people living in pre-Islamic Arabia could have witnessed such a phenomena. Moreover, Mecca being a big trade center, people were coming there from different parts of the world and exchanged stories, beliefs and experiences. Like such an amazing phenomena happening in the seas. They wanted to provide an explanation for this and uh, came up with a divine argument. Frankly, I'm not finding a fitting reply. So I have to read the verse again and again and see what I'm missing here. He released the two seas meeting side by side. Between them is a barrier. Okay, I agree with Stephen up to here. This could be an observable fact. You don't need any signs for this like grass is green or sky is blue. But the next part that is so neither of them transgresses might be storing all the miraculous scientific facts, right? But before we jump into the scientific miracle of this transgression thing, let's take a step back and assume a sailor who is not aware of this Quran verse and also doesn't know anything about ocean sciences. Say this sailor observes two oceans meeting side by side. It is quite natural for him to assume that the two seas don't transgress because if they did, there wouldn't be any visible color differences. If we now look at this scientifically, we need to lay out things very clearly. And the first thing is what is meant by transgression. Only then we can say whether transgression is happening or not. Transgression means going beyond a boundary. Superficially looking at the two seas side by side, of course we do not see any transgression. For making this observation, one doesn't need any divine knowledge. Only eyes and some basic amount of grey matter are enough. However, note that this verse is stated as a general law of nature. So the two water bodies shouldn't be entering into each other's territories even if we go below the ocean surface. I repeat. The water bodies shouldn't be entering into each other's territories even if we go below the ocean surface. Only then we can say they are not transgressing. This being a God-given law must hold wherever two seas meet and at all times. There is no room for any exception. This should be an eternal truth. Keeping this in mind, let us now see the arguments in favor of this verse. 
let me google this Allahu Akbar the Strait of Gibraltar where Atlantic Ocean meets the Mediterranean Sea it seems to be the consummate proof of the scientific miracle of this verse I found so many Islamic websites showing this picture I am fully convinced so I went to Stephen and told him hey do you need any more evidence but you know what Stephen did he laughed at me and added these two arrows saying this is clear proof of transgression I was so annoyed and depressed maybe this picture is not a good evidence for this verse I need to do some more research and show that Islamophobe Stephen right on his face that indeed this verse is a scientific miracle. Let me Google I found this excellent YouTube video with more than 2 million views which will provide a conclusive proof of this scientific miracle. However, these two seas, which merge at the Strait of Gibraltar, were supposed to be equal or at least near to equal in terms of salinity, density, and life forms that they had. However, these two seas have different structures even in places where they converge closely. Upon our investigations, we came across an event that amazed us. There was a great water curtain at the merging point that did not allow these two seas to mix. The same kind of water barrier was found by German scientists at Bab al-Mandab, where waters of Gulf of Aden and Red Sea converge in 1962. In our later investigations, we witnessed the existence of the same kind of barrier in all merging points of seas that have different characteristics. This amazing fact, which amazed Captain Cousteau, about the waters that do not mix up, though seas converge, is explained with the following verse in the Quran 14 centuries ago. So this video says that according to modern science, there is a water curtain. Water from both sides come face to face, but the curtain prevents them to pass through each other. Mashallah, brilliant. Think about it. Isn't this a miracle? How could our unlettered prophet possibly know about such delicate mysteries of nature 14 centuries ago? Now I'll throw this on Stephen's face. Okay. So I met Stephen. He watched the video carefully and at the end he said The animations are impressive but unscientific. Take my advice and do the following. So I followed Stephen's advice and searched this. Okay, so it's NASA. I'm sure you all have heard about NASA. So NASA has a video on YouTube about flow around the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. This is based on satellite data so it really shows what is actually happening out there. And I'm 100% sure it will show the barrier and the fact that the two seas don't transgress. The white arrows show surface currents and blue arrows show deeper currents. You can see large eddies in the Mediterranean Sea. The narrowest region between Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, that is where these two regions meet, is called the Strait of Gibraltar. Oh my goodness, what is it showing? Surface currents from the Atlantic is clearly transgressing into the Mediterranean. Now, if anyone knows a little bit of fluid dynamics, it directly implies that the Mediterranean Sea must also flow into the Atlantic as deeper currents to conserve mass. In other words, both Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea are transgressing into each other. So the thing shown in Quran and Science video, like the water curtain thing or the direction of the arrows to show the seas are not transgressing, are completely false. Why on earth would they have to lie like that? 
So this one is wrong and this one is what is actually happening. Needless to say, I'm very depressed and disappointed. Maybe the verse is saying that the two oceans don't mix with each other. So I met Stephen the other day and told him that maybe this verse is implying that the two seas are not mixing. He smirked and advised me to do some more research. So I went to Google Scholar. It revealed a whooping 165,000 results on Atlantic and Mediterranean's mixing. The first journal paper, okay, so it's in the Journal of Physical Oceanography, the topmost journal in oceanography. Let me go through it. It's entitled Mixing and Spreading of the Mediterranean Outflow by Barringer and Price. It says, as this Mediterranean water flows westward through the Strait of Gibraltar and the Gulf of Cadiz, it mixes with and entrains the overlying North Atlantic Central Water. Damn, I'm losing all hopes. Stephen advised me to read about thermohaline circulation to understand more about this subject. It turns out that temperature and salinity which together determines ocean water's density, are different at different locations. This causes oceans from one region to flow to some very distant region. The wiki article says that extensive mixing therefore takes place between the ocean basins, reducing differences between them and making the Earth's oceans a global system. The water in these circuits transport both energy and mass around the globe. As such, the state of the circulation has a large impact on the climate of the Earth. So in summary, it says that the global oceans are all connected and they flow into each other, or in other words, transgresses. Let's see this NASA video on thermohaline circulation. Now we are looking at flow in the Arctic Ocean near Greenland, quite close to the North Pole. The Arctic Ocean is receiving water from the Northern Atlantic. Now we are moving from the Northern Atlantic to the Southern Atlantic. The Northern Atlantic sends water to the Southern Atlantic and Southern Atlantic receives water from Indian and Pacific Oceans. The Southern Atlantic then flows into the Antarctic or Southern Ocean which is again connected with the Pacific. So all the oceans, Atlantic, Pacific, Southern, Arctic, Indian, are actually connected. They all are transgressing into each other. So in summary, the two seas happily transgress. And the fact that the two seas are not mixing is also wrong. Seas meeting side by side end up mixing. Today I bumped into Stephen again and he educated me on the supercontinent Pangaea and the Tethys Ocean. It turns out that 335 million years ago, all the continents were together, forming a big landmass called Pangaea. This supercontinent existed for around 160 million years. Since there was one big landmass, it also implies that there was one big ocean called the Tethys Ocean which also existed for hundreds of millions of years. Later on, there was continental drift. The Pangaea fragmented out, leading to the present seven continental structures. So the two seas side by side thing in the verse becomes meaningless if we look at the early history of our planet. Let's now see what is this border between the two seas telling us. Let me do some research myself. So I found this fact-checking website, The Observers, where there are important information regarding these viral photos and videos. It says that the claim that two oceans meet but don't mix is erroneous. This photo was taken by someone called Ken Bruland in 2007, who is a researcher 
at the University of California Santa Cruz who was studying the phenomena in the Gulf of Alaska. He says that it's not true to say that the two bodies of water aren't mixing. The border between one type of water and another is always moving, sometimes disappearing completely according to the level of sediment in the water and other factors. So while the photos and videos are real, they don't actually show something that astonishing or unusual, nor do they show a static border between the two oceans. This kind of phenomena is also visible in rivers. The right hand side river is sediment laden while the left hand side river is clean. However, this picture shows that the sediment laden river is transgressing into the blue river. The transgression is visible since the blue river water is clear. Ocean water is not transparent. So while superficially this may look like a barrier, Inside the ocean, one side is actually transgressing into the other side. So, while the Quran verse provides a God-given natural law for the seas, which must be inviolable and true for all times, unfortunately, this is absolutely not the case. What this verse claims is nearly always violated. In summary, it turns out that there are four major issues with this verse which I cannot reconcile. The images and videos widely circulating show a transient superficial border. In some places in oceans, they appear, stay for a certain period, and disappear. Maritime navigation is 4000 to 5000 years old. Any sailor could have observed such a color contrast in oceans. Oceans transgress into each other and mix as well. NASA videos provide proof of this using satellite observations. All oceans are connected. Even the idea of two seas meeting side by side makes little sense if we consider Earth's early history.